हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर गोविंद राय गर सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द क्वेश्चंस ऑफ फार्माकोलॉजी दैट वर आस्ट इन एफएमजी एंट्रेंस एग्जाम व्हिच वाज हेल्ड इन जुलाई 2025 सो स्टार्टिंग विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मलेरिया सो पेशेंट कम्स इन इमरजेंसी विद फीवर एंड अल्टर्ड सेंसोरियम देयर इज प्लाज्मोडियम फेलसिपेरम सो कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मलेरिया इज देयर व्हाट इज ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ चॉइस वी ऑल नो फॉर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मलेरिया ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इज इंट्रावेनस आर्टिसुनेट इंट्रावेनस आर्टिसुनेट सो इट इज क्लोरोक्विन रेजिस्टेंट क्विनिन कैन बी यूज्ड बट नॉट द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस सल्फाडॉक्सिन पाइरेमिथामिन इज ओरल ड्रग नॉट इंडिकेटेड इन कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मलेरिया प्राइमाक्विन इज फॉर रेडिकल क्योर ओनली सो आंसर इज इंट्रावेनस आर्टिसुनेट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन रिस्क ऑफ ऑल इज रिड्यूस्ड बाय ओरल कॉन्ट्रासेप्टिव्स एक्सेप्ट remember oral contraceptives you can remember divide the body into two parts from the diaphragm the upper cancers go up lower cancers go down what are the upper cancers above the diaphragm we have breast so there is increased risk of breast cancer breast cancer above the breast here is cervical obviously we are not talking about this we are talking about cervix this is just to remember so there is increased risk of cervical cancer then below the this all cancers will decrease so there is decreased risk of three cancers below that is remembered as ceo so we have colorectal carcinoma we have endometrial carcinoma and endometriosis both and ovarian carcinoma so these cancers are reduced so which cancer risk is reduced except the answer is cervical carcinoma the risk is increased whereas colorectal reduced ovarian reduced endometriosis also reduced as well as endometrial carcinoma is reduced so answer is cervical carcinoma okay next question which is true regarding the use of ac inhibitors in hypertension so this is easy one so ac inhibitors we know they are vasodilators they cause vasodilation that decrease the peripheral vascular resistance so that decrease the blood pressure as simple as that so they decrease blood pressure by decreasing peripheral vascular resistance that is the answer but if you see they decrease bp by decreasing cardiac output no they do not have direct effect on cardiac output they increase bp is anyways wrong so the right answer is decrease bp by decreasing peripheral vascular resistance okay next question this is a question related to resistant hypertension so patient taking three antihypertensive drugs including diuretics that is the definition of resistant hypertension and we discuss several time drug of choice for resistant hypertension is mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist like spironolactone or aplironone they are drug of choice for resistant hypertension next question here we need to calculate the clearance so we know the formula half life is equal to 0.693 into volume of distribution divided by clearance so we want to calculate clearance so reshuffle the formula clearance will go there half life will come down so clearance will be equal to 0.693 into volume of distribution divided by half life now filling the values first of volume of distribution what is given the drug has volume of distribution 100 ml per kg read carefully 100 ml per kg so person is of 70 kg so volume of distribution will be 100 multiply by 70 that means 7000 ml 7000 ml will be the volume of distribution clear next half life half life given is 3 hours so half life is 3 hours so we will fill these values so answer will be 0.69 multiplied by 7000 divided by 3 divided by 3. so if we uh, take it as 0.7 near about 0.7 so 7 into 749 so 4900 so it become 4900 divided by 3 so 4900 divided by 3 will nearly equal so 16 threes are 48 so 1600 something will answer so 1600 something is 1600 and 70 is it clear so this is a simple question just a formula need to be applied next question a patient has chronic kidney disease with hypertension with protein urea first line remember drug of choice for ckd with protein urea the antihypertensive drug of choice is tell me sat arbs and ac inhibitors the ac inhibitor that means prills and arbs that means sartans they are drug of choice for ckd with protein urea for treatment of hypertension okay next question person has low bp low respiratory rate comato state opioid poisoning is suspected antidote that is the direct question antidote of opioid is naloxone naloxone is given iv it is fast acting it is short acting also but fast acting so drug of choice is naloxone naltrexone can be used for maintenance it is oral drug but answer here is naloxone 
Plumas anil is for benzodiazepine poisoning, atropine for organophosphate poisoning, for opioid poisoning it is naloxone. Okay, next question. So, here a male patient present with stress and difficulty maintaining work life balance. Every one of us suffer from that. PP is 150 by 100. So, hypertensive patient. Fasting sugar is also high and he is overweight also. Okay. So, no medical history, no medication patient is on, physical examination is normal. So, what is the next step? So, there are three problems. One, the person is having hypertension. Second, the person is having hyperglycemia. Third, the person is overweight. So, what we will do? So, we will manage the BP and sugar first. So, BP and sugar need to be managed. Advise rest and no therapy is wrong. Rather, we will advise the exercise. Because first of all, person is in stress. So, we will advise the exercise, which is a stress buster. Second, we will decrease the BP and sugar also. So, advice should not be rest. Advice is to do exercise. Second, start tirzepatide. Tirzepatide is weight loss drug only indicated in morbid obesity. Person is slightly overweight. So, we will not start tirzepatide. Glucocorticoid will further increase blood sugar we cannot use. So, among these, the next will be start telmisar. And if the blood sugar remain high, we have to start anti-diabetic drug also. But here we will start telling me start. Okay. Next question. A patient has chronic kidney disease and undergoing chemotherapy. Person is coming with symptom of anemia, fatigue, pallor, dis breathlessness, anemia symptoms. And there is normocytic, normochromic anemia. So, low reticulocyte count. So, that means bone marrow suppression has occurred due to chemotherapy. RBCs are not being produced. So, what is the drug of choice for chemotherapy induced anemia? Yes, answer is erythropoietin. So, which is erythropoietin? It is a darbopoietin. Remember, filgrastim is a granulocyte stimulator. It is used for leukopenia. Operal vacin is interleukin 11. It is used for thrombocytopenia. And parenteral iron will not be there because it is normocytic normochromic anemia. That means iron deficiency is not there. So, answer will be darbopoietin L. Okay, next question. Patient has excessive thirst and frequent urination and wakes up multiple times at night. So, mainly two type of condition cause this. One, diabetes mellitus. But history of head injury is there. Head injury is there. Head injury is there. And person's blood glucose is normal. If normal blood glucose, it cannot be mellitus. So, second is diabetes insipidus. Because of head injury, maybe there is damage to the pituitary, posterior pituitary. That may lead to neurogenic diabetes insipidus and what is the drug of choice and why neurogenic diabetes insipidus occur yes due to less adh less vasopressin so we will give vasopressin from outside so selective b2 agonist we use is desmopressin it is a drug of choice for neurogenic diabetes insipidus which is this case okay next question a patient has come with fever and arthritis there is presence of carditis in this patient so, person has past history of MI and peptic ulcer disease. So, which anti-inflammatory drug you will use? Remember, there are two problems. One, peptic ulcer. Second, history of MI. Although for peptic ulcer, we will avoid the traditional NSX, which block both COX-1 and COX-2. And in MI, we avoid COX-2 inhibitors. Yeah? But both, all the options given are only these four. That means diclofenac, naproxen, ibuprofen, which are classical NSAIDs and salicoxib selective COX-2 inhibitor. So, what we will do? So, remember the non-selective COX inhibitor, they not only increase the risk of peptic ulcer, but also little bit MI. On the other hand, salicox is the one which at least do not cause peptic ulcer. So, among these, the answer will be salicoxib, but this is not a good question. There should not be history of MI then it would have been right question. But because this type of question was given, among these, we will choose salicoxib. Okay. Next question. 50-year-old male patient with complaint of leg swelling and pain in the heel. So, there is Achilles tendinitis. So, there is tendinitis, which is mechanism of action of the drug causing this. So, which antibiotic can cause tendinitis? Tendon inflammation. Yes, it is fluoroquinolone. What is the mechanism of fluoroquinolone? Yes, they inhibit DNA gyrase. So, they are basically asking the mechanism of fluoroquinolone. Okay. Next question. Person has taken tricyclic antidepressant and present with palpitation, dry mouth, mitriasis, tachycardia. Remember, tricyclic antidepressants, apart from their increase in noradrenaline and serotonin due to reuptake inhibition, they have several extra properties. The most important extra property of them is anticholinergic property. They have antihistaminic property. They have seizure causing property. 
they have alpha blocking property many other properties are there but all the symptoms which are given here they are anticholinergic so there is palpitation dry mouth midriasis tachycardia all are anticholinergic tcas are very strong anticholinergic drugs so what we will do in tca overdose so the drug of choice for tca overdose is sodium bicarbonate particularly when the person is having metabolic acidosis we give sodium bicarbonate it will take care of arrhythmias also but here there are no such symptoms here are mainly anticholinergic symptoms so you need to tell what is the antidote of atropine like drugs so antidote of atropine like drugs is physostigmine so answer will be physostigmine naloxone is for opioid flumazenil is for benzodiazepine poisoning lithium is not as an antidote it is used for mania so the answer by ruling out also will become physostigmine is it clear next question a person is developing uh, this daytime sedation with cetirizine. So, cetirizine is the only second generation antihistaminic which can cause little bit of sedation. Most of the sedation is caused of first generation. So, which is the alternative? Give some other second generation drug. So, diphenhydramine is first generation, promethazine first generation, chlorpheniramine first generation. So, fixofenadine is a second generation which is non sedative. Okay. So, alternative will be fixofenadine. Okay. Next question. A patient infant is brought to pediatric clinic with history of sudden jerky movement of the limbs. There is EG shows hip arrhythmia. So it is, yes, it is West syndrome or we can say infantile spasms. Infantile spasms, we all know the drug of choice is ACTH. ACTH is drug of choice for infantile spasms. If infantile spasms are associated with tuberous sclerosis, then we use Vigabatrin. But here, no Vigabatrin in the option, no confusion, answer is ACTH. Next question. So here, after taking some chemotherapy drug, person is coming with respiratory symptoms like shortness of breath, dry cough, fatigue and denies chest pain. So there is no chest pain. So there is basal crepitations heard. There is binatural nodule infiltrates. CT scan shows interstitial lung disease. So basically pulmonary fibrosis. So important thing, second thing, there is no evidence of bone marrow suppression. So the question asked is, which drug cause pulmonary fibrosis? but it do not cause bone marrow suppression. So remember, among the given option, bleomycin and cyclophosphamide can cause pulmonary fibrosis. Remember, cycle bus car truck drone, they cause pulmonary fibrosis. So we have blow, they blow the horn, cycle means cyclophosphamide, it can cause pulmonary fibrosis. But cyclophosphamide also cause bone marrow suppression. Whereas bleomycin do not cause bone marrow suppression. Remember, three drugs not causing bone marrow suppression, A, B, C. A, B, C, A for asparaginase, B for bleomycin, bleomycin, C for cristin, vincristin. So, asparaginase, bleomycin, cristin means vincristin, they do not cause bone marrow suppression. So, answer here will be bleomycin. Remember, even if they do not give no bone marrow suppression, still answer will remain bleomycin because it is more commonly associated with pulmonary fibrosis as compared to all other drugs of A, B, whatever we discuss, cycle cast part. Okay, next question. Which is used for pre-operative management of pheochromocytoma? The answer is phenoxybenzam. It is non-selective, irreversible alpha-1 plus alpha-2 blocker. So, it is used for drug of choice for pheochromocytoma. Next question. Which is first-line therapy for aborting the acute attack of cluster headache? Remember, the best drug will be 100% oxygen. 100% oxygen. Okay. We can add sumatriptan, but best drug is 100% oxygen. Next. A patient has a history of severe persistent asthma. Currently taking inhaled corticosteroid and LABA. Despite adherence, there are seasonal exacerbations. IgE level is raised. What to be done? So, let's see the options. Oral antibiotics. So, there is no indication of infection. Antibiotics plus SABA will not be required. IB terbutalin. Terbutalin can be used for maintaining, but there is no intravenous. So, it should be inhalational. Subcutaneous omelizumab. Yes, it is a monoclonal antibody against IgE. Ig levels are raised also, so this is the best answer. IV corticosteroids used only in status asthmaticus, which is not the case here. So the answer will be subcutaneous omelizumab. Okay. Next question: Correct treatment of peptic ulcer with H pylori. We know in H pylori we use proton pump inhibitor with two antimicrobial agents. Which two antimicrobial agents? Any two out of clarithromycin, amoxicillin, and metronidazole. So, commonly used therapy either CAP therapy, that means clarithromycin, amoxicillin, and PPI, or we can also use PCM, paracetamol therapy, that means PPI, clarithromycin, metronidazole. 
these are the two commonly used therapies so let's see omeprazole only does not make sense ciprofloxacin is not used in peptic ulcer omeprazole clarithromycin metronidazole pcm therapy is the answer metronidazole omeprazole sucralfate is not used so answer is pcm omeprazole clarithromycin and metronidazole okay next question so a farmer from rural india present with fever and scar scar means it is scrub typhus so what is the drug of choice for scrub typhus 100 times we have already discussed doxycycline drug of choice for scrub typhus next question so patient with poorly controlled diabetes mellitus and his tachypneic decreased breath sounds on the right side there is nodular lesion with hello sign in ct scan so this is telling about aspergillosis the characteristic features of aspergillosis so what is the drug of choice for aspergillosis yes it is voriconazole voriconazole is a drug of choice for aspergillosis okay next question a patient of schizophrenia developed muscular dystonia and was given treatment for that what is the treatment of dystonia yes anticholinergic drugs like benzaxole benzotropin like drugs he present with complaint of dry mouth midriasis urinary retention so these are anticholinergic side effects so that can be caused by benzotropin benzaxole like drugs so which is likely to cause the answer is benzotropin remember hello peridol cutapin clozapin all are anti schizophrenic drug they are for schizophrenia they are not for treating the dystonia yeah. second thing even clozapin have anticholinergic properties but clozapin number one it is not used for normally schizophrenia it is used for drug resistant schizophrenia only and number two clozapin the symptoms have started after starting the drug for dystonia so the better answer is anticholinergic drug like benzotropin okay next question patient was taking risperidone and he experienced dystonia for which we start benzotropin same question now a week later the patient present in emergency with dry mouth blurred vision confusion urinary retention so again same symptom that means anticholinergic poisoning anticholinergic poisoning all symptoms are there how to manage so basically the we will start physostigmin because physostigmin is anti dot for anticholinergic drugs like atropine atropine antidote is physostigmin so anticholinergic poisoning we use physostigmin remember we will not discontinue risperidone we have to manage that administered iv dentrolin this is not neuroleptic malignant syndrome we will not start dentrolin and activated charcoal and iv fluid and observe no we cannot observe the symptoms are there we have to treat them. okay next question a patient is having intermittent fever undulant fever we say night sweats fatigue joint pain and person has consumed unpasteurized milk so unpasteurized milk it gives the feeling of brucella so that is confirmed by giving gram negative cocobacillus so it is brucellosis what is the drug of choice for brucellosis it is doxycycline plus rifampicin doxycycline plus rifampicin is a drug of choice for brucellosis okay next question a uh, patient is having sickle cell disease so basically it is sickle cell anemia so there is uh, painful episodes of sickle cell crisis predominantly hbs is seen confirming sickle cell anemia so what is the treatment to reduce so drug of choice for sickle cell anemia is hydroxyurea hydroxyurea voxilotor many cringanglor so many drugs are used hydroxyurea is most commonly used drug for sickle cell anemia okay the last question which drug has both anti hiv property as well as hepatitis b so we all know let us treat hepatitis b drugs so these are lamivudin amtricitabin and tenofovir so these drugs have dual properties so among these the answer will be lemmy so these are the important questions that were asked in fmg exam of july 2021 thank you very much